rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, you go first. What memory will you take away from our experience working together? Um, so you remember Tai Chi Day? We were on. Mm. Uh, we were in the middle of the park, and I um, I decided that I was going to get some ice cream, and I asked you if you wanted some ice cream, and I don't think I expected you to say yes, and you did, and then we spent the next like half an hour trying to figure out what was the ideal ice cream to get. And that was a really fun conversation. So I think that's the one that I'm going to remember the most. How do you know a scene went well? Uh, sometimes you know the scene goes well because you know. Other times you don't know. In my case, I don't know. And it, you might feel that it's not going well. You might even feel, be thinking totally things you feel you shouldn't be thinking doing the scene, but in fact that might help the scene and it might turn out to be better than mm -hmm. you think again because it's removed from you and objectively people seeing it and you seeing it later you realize that it was good. Do you have a specific memory of the <coughs> scene that where you were thinking that like and that, that and what you were thinking wound up playing out well on screen? I, I can't there's one but it's so far back that I it's um, and I realized that's when I realized that you can be, it, it doesn't really mean that what you're doing or what you're thinking is going to have a negative effect on the scene. Mm -hmm. But that was so long ago, it was a movie I did 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago. Which one? <laughs> oh, I don't know, it's, it's too complicated. Okay. <laughs> um. Describe to me the precise moment you decided to become an actor. Uh, I was three, and my mom was playing Ava Perone at uh, a summer stock theater in Pennsylvania called the Allen Berry Playhouse, and she was terrific. I mean, such an incredible performance. And I, I never lost sight of the fact that she was my mom, but I totally believed she was this other person mm -hmm. too, and. I, I, I mean, I was three. I couldn't have really, really consciously thought, oh, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. But I remember being in the theater, listening to the music, watching the drama, watching my mom kill it, and just think, I, I want that. I, I want to be doing that. I want that energy. I need to ask that question of you, though, because that is too good, and I want to know the no. answer. Uh, can you describe to me the precise moment that you decided to become an actor? I don't remember exactly. I mean, I, I started acting when I was 10 on Saturdays, uh, and then I stopped until I was in my late uh, 16 or so. I, uh, uh, so when I was 10 years old or before. Where did you study when you, were, when you were 10? Where did I study? Mm -hmm. the, the dramatic workshop. Um, at that time, it was above the Capitol Theater, which is across from the Winter Garden. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your teacher? Um, her name was Maria Le Pescada. She was one of the founders of the dramatic workshop. And were you in a class with other 10 year olds or was it like yeah, adults? Yeah, the kids you know, at that time. It was those Saturdays. <laughs> My turn, right? Yes. Have you learned anything recently about your craft that surprised you? Yeah. Um, so I just did a play, uh, it was a one woman show. Mm. And um, I just had a lot of stuff just kind of hitting me in my personal life. And I didn't think I could go on. It's just like something really hard had happened that day. And I never, I mean, you know me, I, I, yeah. I, I could never imagine missing a performance, but I really didn't think I could go on that day. And I called my boss at the theater and he just said, it, you got to do it. You got to yeah. do it. You got to dig down deep. Did you have an understudy? Did you? No, <laughs> no, I didn't have an understudy. I'm the only one in the show. Yeah. so. Um, and he said, you know, you just go on stage and you just got to trust it's going to be there. You're going to find it. And there was um, this moment on, I remember, where um, I, I like, didn't go up on a line, but the line just wouldn't come mm -hmm. out. And I had to handle it in the moment. Um, and I needed a break from the audience. And I just kind of curled up into a ball on stage. 
and took a breath and stood up and I thought that maybe I just ruined the show but they were totally with it and it occurred to me they didn't know that yeah. this was an unusual show and yeah it was a way more raw performance than I had been giving but it was it worked and I got right. a, and, and the, a huge audience reaction that night so I guess the thing that I learned is like it's not really about you. It's not really about mm -hmm. what you think, and, 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 and you're never going to have the perfect set of circumstances to be able to do it. You just got to accept it for what it is, go with it, and, um, and just have a lot of faith that when the writing's good and you've put in the work and you've rehearsed, that um, you can rely on yeah. that. So, what's a line you've never forgotten and why? Um, uh, a line I never forgot. Not a line that I, but a line in life that somebody said to, to me was, if I only knew then what I know now, mm -hmm. that's it. <laughs> You're so good at giving minimalist perfect mm. answers. <laughs> I am not. My turn. This is, a, this is a question that really I shouldn't ask, but what's something, you, they wrote this, they wrote, <laughs> you wrote it. What's something you learned from working with me? You could, you could have learned nothing. Well, I didn't learn nothing, that's for sure. Um, I mean, I don't want to embarrass you, but I had my, like, antenna up the entire time we were working together. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, you're a legend. And so it would be foolish not to observe you, um, just to learn how, you know, the best does it. And the thing that just blew me away, and what I learned was, you're so relaxed on set, and you're so humble about everything. It's not about any of the nonsense, any of the... Not the drama. <laughs> not the drama. It's not There's about no the drama. drama at all. Uh, you brought in zero drama yeah, to the set mm -hmm. any day. And I didn't... It, it was just a great delight to discover that someone who is as well-known and well-respected and legendary as you could have no ego. Um, great pride in your work and, uh, and great level of attention and care with your character and for the work that we were doing but no ego, and I thought that was, that would be refreshing in anyone, but the fact that it was you made it kind of priceless. You look so uncomfortable right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I really enjoyed answering that. <laughs> Describe our collaboration in five words. Our collaboration. Our collaboration. Mutual respect and admiration. For good results of six words. <laughs> I, th I think we'll take it. That was amazing. When you think about making this film, what's the moment that comes to mind? Uh, the car, maybe. The car. You don't remember scene? this movie. This is what I'm getting no, from this yeah, answer. You don't remember I, anything I, I we don't filmed. Actually. I'm Annie. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Do you know what Tinder is? Tinder? Yes. Uh, it's kind of a, isn't it a fuel or something? Or uh, uh, wood or something? Yes. That is absolutely what it is. That wasn't my real question. Um, that wasn't your real question. <laughs>